Jones and uh, Jones and Gus is done. They're going to fight at the end of the year. Um, I like that. They're going to have to strip Daniel Cormier, make it for the official championship instead of the interim championship. I like that. Daniel Cormier isn't going to return to 205 pounds. Yeah, you have to get on with the division. So uh, that piece of it is good news. That's not a sad thing for Daniel that he's having his title taken, right? Amazing accomplishment that he achieved. That will be here forever and ever. And he's still the world champion at heavyweight. And as best I can tell, he's got two fights lined up at heavyweight, right? He's got Derek Lewis. And I believe that Brock Lesnar fight is, is going to happen. So let's go back and look at the Jones because, uh, look, guys, there's going to be some pushback here that, that, that for Jones's bad action and coming off a suspension that he can walk right back into a world title fight. You have to please stand back for just a moment and look at it from the other side of the table, which is hard to do. When a bad actor, we're seeing some of this going on with Brock Lesnar. We saw some of it go on with Connor, and now we're going to see it with Connor and Khabib should we get that rematch. Both of these guys are going to be suspended and hung up, and you know, we're going to reward them with a rematch, and you're going to reward them with a huge payday and a world title fight and all these types of things. Look, don't confuse the two. Don't confuse the bad action. Because here's the other side of the coin as it pertains to John Jones and uh, and Gus. And while you would be right to say Jones' bad action comes back into a world title fight, you've got to understand how good John Jones is. He's a very rare talent. He's a very dangerous guy. So if you're not going to put him in a world title fight, where are you going to put him? And if you put all of your focus on, well, let's let's move him down the card a little bit and let's make him build his way up and let's let him not collect that same paycheck and get the same promotion and show them a little bit of punishment. If you do that, think about what you're doing to somebody else, okay? You have to bring in somebody that is very skilled, that can protect themselves, who has experience, who is trained, and who is very high level in the sport, or they're going to get hurt. John Jones is that kind of guy. He's not just going to go tackle you and hold you there. John Jones comes out very dynamic, with some very high-level kickboxing, with some very sharp body parts, knees, shins, elbows. He's going to hurt you. you got to put John in a high-level fight. Once we can all understand that, that's where you start to see that, look, they got to move on with the division, and Alexander Gustafson deserves this. He's deserved this for a meaningful period of time. He gave John Jones the hardest fight of his career. Many people thought that Gus won that fight that night and should have left there with the world championship, including one of the three judges. It was a split decision just to remind you guys. So Gus does deserve this. Us fans deserve this. We've wanted to see this fight. We were even promised this fight. If you will remember, that fight was so hard. John Jones is the one that refused to do it. We would have already seen Jones versus Gus too. John Jones was the skunk at the garden party that refused to do it. These guys got put on the cover of, of an EA Sports video game, and they were doing promotion all over the place, and this was the most talked about fight in the UFC at that time, and Jones refused to do it. What I'm just suggesting for you is that before you look at John and a bit of a reward, as you guys see it, you're seeing this as a reward. I don't know if anybody else in common life would look at getting locked in there with the mauler as a reward for anybody. But if that is how you're choosing to look at it, just don't forget the other side of the coin, which is this is what Gus would like. And this is a good opportunity for Gus. And the stripping of Daniel Cormier and getting on with the division. So the rest of the boys, the Anthony Smiths, the rest of the guys that still have dreams and goals and want to see opportunities come can get it. It's very important that all, all these pieces come together. So that's going to be at the end of the year. That's the appropriate fight. And I don't fully know what to make of it. I'm only as good as the information that I'm giving. And the information I'm given right now by John Jones is that he is not ready. Here we are in, our, in October. Do the math. November, December, in a couple of weeks. So that fight's 10 weeks away. John Jones was supposed to fight a month from now. So when that fight would only be six weeks away. Madison Square Garden card. He said, no. He said, I'm not ready. It's not enough time. So he's saying that on November 3rd, he could not be ready to do it. But on December 28th or 29th, at the end of the year that he can't, he's only given himself an extra five and a half weeks. I guess that's the point that I'm trying to prove. So when I, I'm confronted with that information, it looks like John isn't ready. Is John going to get ready? He didn't give himself a whole lot of time. Alexander's ready now. Alexander was willing to do it 
at MSG. I think that's a relevant piece of the puzzle when you look at the fact that these guys have already competed. Jones had some unfair advantages. And I think he'll go straight, at least for a little bit. I don't think he'll have them that night. I think it is a fair talking point. He's the one that created it. John created it. It's not a pile on John session. He created that talking point by failing multiple drug tests. We'll see. You know, the first time he failed the test is the only time he came back straight. It was against OSP, and it was a reduced John Jones. And he also showed us that he's the greatest talent in the world. Worst I've ever seen John Jones look, ever, not even a close second, was against OSP. And John won every single round, and he won every single aspect, and he left there with an interim world championship. I mean, the guy's a really rare talent. I would just suggest for you that Gustafson is too. And the only guys that have ever really been able to get over on Gus are guys with an incredible power. You know, he had, he had problems if you go look at Rumble Johnson. And you could do that fight a couple of times, and Gus was going to have problems each time. But John doesn't bring that same kind of power. He's dynamic. He's accumulative. But that's the same thing that Gus has. John has a reach. I don't know if his reach is what Gus's is. I suppose I do know the answer to that, don't I? It is a little bit longer than Gus's. But I think you see the point. These guys really nullify each other really well. And one of the reasons that John said that he had such a hard time, he openly said this, he said, the reason I had such a hard time with Gus is I didn't take him serious. I didn't know that was going to be as serious of a battle as it turned out to be. He said that. But he is now also telling us, I'm not ready. Give me a little bit more time. And they did. But they only gave him five and a half weeks. I think it's a very interesting fight. I think you guys think that it's a very interesting fight. But I have noticed that there is some pushback that somebody coming off of a suspension is work, walking into a world title fight. And I just want to remind you, there's very good reason for that. The protection of the other athletes, but also the opportunity that is being presented here for everybody else.